I'm going to get Russell, your first actor, this section. He's fucking brilliant. Yeah, have a great time. Start the applause. <laughs> Bring it around to him. Come on. Bring it around to him. For Russell Anton! Oh, all right, everybody. How are we? Very close down here. Have you been double jabbed? Yes. <laughs> fucking triple jab this one, the greedy bitch. I got double jabbed on the way here, actually. The toilet's in John Lewis. <laughs> Might nip over for my booster on the way home if anyone wants to join. Second cubicle on the left. How are we all doing? Beth, no green. It's nice to be out of the house, isn't it, eh? I mean, yeah, as a stand-up comedian, I've just spent the last two and a half years calculating how much Lambrini I can buy with my universal credit. I can't even afford Lambrini now. This fucking rising cost of living is terrible, isn't it? We've all had to make changes, haven't we? I was buying drugs the other day from the local dealer. I had to pay with Klarna. Honestly, I've just paid off a very, very enjoyable K-hole, actually, in three small, manageable monthly instalments. <laughs> and the cost of petrol, I've had to drive it. Have you got any drivers in? Yeah, yeah. oh, yeah, you look like a drink driver over there. Um, <laughs> it's awful. Do you do, mate, do you do what I do now? Every time you buy petrol, when you go in to pay for it, you just steal something to make yourself feel better. <laughs> Just something small, a magazine, chocolate bar. Got a nice handbag off someone yesterday. <laughs> it's nice to see so many people out as well, because some audiences are still, you know, they're still, like, scared to go out because of that fucking COVID thing, aren't they? I mean, the first thing I went to when the restrictions were lifted, me and my boyfriend went to a concert, we went to see Gabrielle. Yes. <laughs> no, honestly, it was awful. I complained. You know, I mean, between the eye patch and the face mask, I mean, you just didn't get the full value of the show, did you? <laughs> Listen, before I carry on, there's a few of my friends in tonight that I've not seen for ages, so do you mind if I give them a bit of a shout-out? Because yeah. they, listen, they were self-isolating because they're in the high-risk category. So I think they're here somewhere. My friend Amy, she's somewhere here. She was self-isolating for, like, a year and a half because she's got type 2 diabetes. Yeah, it's very sad. She's made up. Uh, my friend Trudy, she's somewhere in here tonight. She was self-isolating for, like, a year. You don't need to look. She's not really here. Uh, <laughs> She was self-isolated for like a year and a half because she had a kidney transplant in 2012. And my friend Tammy, she's been self-isolating for like five or six years because everybody fucking hates that bitch. <laughs> Do you remember that period of time, right, when you weren't allowed into people's houses, but everyone was doing it anyway? Do you remember that? <laughs> oh, my God, right, this one night, my fat friend came round. She'd had a fucking lovely lockdown. Honestly, she'd been taking drugs for, like, five days. She'd not slept. She looked a bastard. <laughs> she has been taking ecstasy, ketamine, cocaine, smack. She's Scottish. Anyway... <laughs> I said, love, I said, love, are you going to take this vaccine? Do you know what she said? She went, no. I like to know what's going in my body. <laughs> I said, no, you fucking don't. I said, even when you go to Greg's, you put a blindfold on and ask them to surprise you. And you, did anyone else have those kind of, like, really irritating friends, right, who were, like, bragging about what life skills they were learning during the lockdown? Do you know those fucking idiots were doing yoga and pilates and learning conversation on Bengali? The fucking idiots that didn't really do a bastard lingo after the free trial. Well, I was at this party... Well, it's more of an orgy, actually, with... <laughs> with a load of gays, right, and head gay, right... Fucking proper bitch, right? I think he was trying to, like, embarrass me. He said, oh, Russell, he said, as a stand-up comedian, you had loads of time off, didn't you? He said, what life skill did you learn? Fucking life skill? I just, I just don't really know. But I did say, you know, during the very first and second lockdown, I'm not sure I'd call it a life skill as such, but I did become very, very good at self-harming whilst watching Homes Under the Hammer. <laughs> <laughs> and who had a great lockdown? Boris Johnson did, didn't he, everybody? He had a fabulous time, didn't he? I mean, he had all those bastard parties. He decorated his living room. He had about 75 more children, didn't he? I mean, I'm not being funny, but unfortunately, the truth is, there's probably people in here tonight who don't know that their real dad is actually Boris Johnson. <laughs> and I'm looking at you with that hair. <laughs> no, honestly, I reckon someone's going to come knocking at the door. It's going to be Davina McCall with some very unfortunate news on Long Lost Family, isn't it? And I reckon the problem is much worse than what we think, you know. I reckon it's going to get much worse. We're going to get those nuisance phone calls. You know, like the PPI scandal, hey? It's going to be like that. You'll see an unknown number. You will, yes. You'll answer it. <laughs> Hello. 
Did your mum have sex with Boris Johnson in the 1990s? Was too embarrassed to say anything. You could join millions of other people who've claimed thousands of pounds by successfully identifying yourself to be one of Boris Johnson's unwanted bastard babies. Now listen everybody, you're getting serious now. Now that we have just gone through the very quick and successful transition period from global pandemic into threat of a nuclear war. <laughs> do we all remember that hour a few weeks ago when we relaxed? Do you remember? <laughs> for one hour we took our masks off and then we're all on Amazon Prime looking for gas masks instead. <laughs> anyway, right, now that we've, you know, we've completed that period, right, successfully, do you think it's time that we could all stop sanitising our hands, eh? Oh my God, it's relentless, isn't it? Everywhere you go. If you remember the very, very first lockdown, do you remember how strict it was? We were all doing as we were told. Well, I was at an orgy. <laughs> Don't judge, honestly, it was mainly key workers that were there, to be honest with you. <laughs> and it was on a Thursday night, so technically we were giving ourselves a clap. Anyway, it's like this fucking orgy. And you know what it's like when you go to an orgy, right? Yes. Um, and you get there, there's always someone on the door, isn't there? Anyway, so this big fucking gay on the door. He says, oh, if you want to come in, you have to sanitise your hands. I thought, well, that's not going to make much use, is it, to be honest with you? <laughs> anyway, I did it anyway, begrudgingly. But I didn't mind. But the thing was, it was that cheap sanitizer. Do you know that really horrible, cheap, thin, sticky sanitizer? Oh, my God, what's the point of cheap sanitizer? It doesn't even stay on your hands, does it? You put it on and it drips off. Yesterday, I was walking through Wilkinson's. It looked like I'd just been fingering a gremlin. <laughs> yes. And do you remember how sore our hands were? Do you remember from all the clapping? Do you remember how chapped and sore and dry our hands were? Yours are still like that. Um, <laughs> do you remember that? Honestly, my hands were so dry. This right hand looked like I'd been wanking off a cactus. <laughs> and anyone come across that cheap sanitizer that smells of tequila? Oh, my God, it's awful, isn't it? It confused my mum, didn't it, in Weatherspoons? She licked the salt bit that I drank the fucking sanitizer, didn't she? My mum's got COVID now as well, everybody. Yes, don't worry, it's fine. It's not the old one, it's the new, you know, the mild, I can't believe it's not COVID variant. So she's fine, yes. Now, I don't know whether you know this, but we have, we have actually just gone past the two-year anniversary of what has been the most life-changing event of our, our history, hasn't it? When we started to see the most horrific headlines and we started to realise what our lives are truly going to be like. Do, do we know what we're talking about? What am I talking about? I'm actually... Boris Johnson, I'm actually talking about when Philip Schofield came out as a gay on TV. <laughs> do you remember that, everybody? Oh, you probably won't know. He's not big in Miami, is he? She's not got a fucking clue, this bitch. Um, <laughs> She's got nothing to say because she didn't understand anything. Um, <laughs> Philip Schofield, right, did anyone give a shit? No. Was anyone surprised? No. Was anyone more surprised just to do those We Buy Any Car adverts? <laughs> I mean, honestly, 59 years is a long time for someone to come out, isn't it? Especially when he was at that orgy I was at. And I know it took him 30 seconds to tell me how much my Vauxhall Corsa was worth. <laughs> do we have gays in tonight? Oh, well, someone, the lady made a kind of fanny fart, so I think that's a positive thing, isn't it? No gays? Oh, they're probably in the toilets, aren't they? They usually are, actually. <laughs> Not those toilets, anyway, they're grim, aren't they? Um, do you want to hear my coming out story? Yes? Well, I never actually came out as a proper gay to my mum. She just presumed when she found my poppers in my school bag when I was 12 years old. <laughs> it's a true story, right? I came home from school, she's smelling my poppers. She says, what are these for? <laughs> I said, Mum, they're for cleaning CDs with. <laughs> Big mistake. Came home from school the next day to find my mum off her fucking face. <laughs> Poppers in one hand, Jake cloth in the other. She says, what the hell is this? It's ruined the Lighthouse family CD. Your dad's just passed out upstairs. <laughs> my Auntie Pam, right, she thinks all gays know each other. She works in B&M in North Wales, right? <laughs> she said to me, oh, there's a new gay at work called Gareth. Do you know him? Of course not, Auntie Pam. Anyway, and then she showed me his Instagram. I said, oh, of course I do. I hate that fucking bitch. <laughs> and now I've just celebrated a big birthday, everybody. Yes. <laughs> Anyone want to guess? Do you want to guess? 50 fucking titwitch. 50. <laughs> Who guessed that? Was that you? <laughs> well, I would never ask a lady her age. How much do you weigh, though? <laughs> 
Oh, no, guess who said 40? I am 40, yeah, yeah, thank you, little fucking... Oh, thank you, you look like you've just met in the womb, actually. <laughs> Smells of amniotic fluid in this area over here, yeah. Fucking millennials or whatever they are. Generation Zs, are you? Yes. Well, anyway, I am 40, yes. I mean, gays look younger for... Look, we look younger than normal people, don't we? Yes, we do. Apart from all those terrible gays that do loads of crystal meth and go to loads of orgies. But I stopped all that in March, maybe. <laughs> I want to say March, but I think it was a couple of weeks ago, yeah. And it's a funny age, 40. Too young for Antiques Roadshow, but too old for fucking TikTok, isn't it? I've tried. Do you know, it's not old, though, is it? No, thank you. It is in gay years, honestly. Gay years are like dog years. <laughs> the last time I was in a gay bar, a younger gay got up and offered me a seat. I know, I said I'm all right, thank you. I'm just about to come up off my MDMA, actually, but thank you very much for offering. <laughs> but I am starting to feel a little bit old. It's terrible. I was driving on the way here. I did this thing that only old people do, where you have to turn the music down to see better. <laughs> Not sure how that works. I also work in a restaurant, right? I work in a restaurant in Chelsea. Mmm, yes. I know, it's really good working in Chelsea, because we tend to get a very high quality of lost property. <laughs> Managed to get all my mum's Christmas presents last year from a lovely boutique I like to call Table 21. <laughs> anyway, but in the morning, the waiters and waitresses, they're all, like, really young, like, you know, like 18, and they put the radio on, Capital FM. I don't have a clue who anyone is anymore. Do you, do you, do you enjoy pop music? Just say you do, I've not got long. Yes, you do. <laughs> Who's your favourite pop star? Dua Lipa. Oh, wow, Dua Lipa. <laughs> it's funny you should say that. Dua bastard Lipa. <laughs> I thought that was a third-world country, honestly. I swear to God, at school every year we used to raise money for the starving, dying children of Dua Lipa. <laughs> and I said that joke actually not long ago in a gig in Blackpool. This woman got really upset. She stood up, she went, You pronounced it wrong, it's not Dua Lipa, it's Dua Lipa. <gasps> I said, I'm so sorry, madam. Do I give a shit? <laughs> Arianda Grande? Arianda Grande. I wrote my resignation letter to Debenhams in the 90s in that font. <laughs> it's only a few weeks ago I found out Justin Bieber wasn't actually a lesbian. <laughs> And I was watching the Brits with my mum. She says, ooh, I hope the bin bag man wins something. She meant the rag and bone man, didn't she, everybody? <laughs> oh, guys, listen, my time is up. You have been delightful. I'm going to have to go. Pass you back to our lovely MC. My name is Russell Arathoon.